Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. I've gotten the front one done. I'm going to give him a break on that. I'm going to move to the back using a hoof jack stand. I can lift his leg up, cradle that right in there in the natural range of motion, which is very close to him. And he's comfortable just like that. I'm not holding up his weight. I'm going to put my knee behind the fetlock, use the clinch cutter, cut those clinches. This shoe is a crease shoe, and you can see I've put drive-in studs in the heels to allow for some traction. I'm straightening those clinches out or cutting them off to help get those nails out. I can just set that clinch cutter in there and give each one of those nail heads a pop and you can see that uh, Pat is wearing hard on this outside not so much on the inside see how the nails are still sticking up and that's because he's base narrow again we've bred these horses for centuries to be base narrow so they travel close and can stay within the furrow I'm just gonna pull the nails that I can out of there, get between the heel of the hoof, heel of the shoe, I'll give one pry back, set that down, get the nails out that I can get out, and then I'll move forward. Keep prying down and towards the toe. Pop that shoe down, get the nails that I can, and I'll give this one one more jar, knock that loose. You can also use a crease nail puller to reach in there and loosen up that nail. And take it out. By taking the nails out individually, I'm less likely to damage the hoof wall. Again, we'll give them a break. When I set this hoof down, I'll palm it on the sole, take the stand out, and set it down. the wear of the shoe. He's wearing more on the outside. His feet tend to be a lot closer together than he is up above. I'm being aware of this. I need to give him a little more fullness on the outside. I need to tighten up the inside to uh, help him out with that conformation. Using the hoof pick, I'll pick from heel to toe, clean out the collateral sulcus down each side of the frog, brush the dirt and the debris off of the bottom of the foot, 
This nice knife also has a hoof pick here. It's important to get that debris out of there if there's stones or debris in there. It's going to dull your knife up very quickly, make it more difficult to trim. I'll find the parameter at the point of the frog. Here we have a lot more hoof than we had in the front, which is normal because it's a more upright hoof. And there we have gotten down to uniform tissue texture. Gives me an idea of how much foot I have on there. Here I'll do a little more manicuring on the sole. Clean up by the bars. Take it down to a glossy here at the uh, seat of corn where the bars come into the wall. Give me an indication as to the length of the foot in the back part and tip my knife up and go around and give myself a trail for the nippers. I'll give the horse a quick little break here, reevaluate the hoof, and then we'll take it back up and trim off the excess. It may seem like a wasted routine, but that little break can make it a lot easier for you and the horse to get this done. Now I'll trim off that excess. And I'm just taking short bites, meaning I'm not taking full nipper width. I'm going around, just rock that nipper a little bit, set it back in, rock it a little bit, set it back in. Stay right in that trail. And that makes it so much easier to get a flat, smooth nipper run that doesn't take a lot of rasping. It's an important fact to keep this as perpendicular to the bottom of the foot. Don't tip it out because then we're not going to have a flat surface to set our shoe on. And using this uh, Bellotta rasp, I'm going to get that as flat as I can. And then I'm going to go for a uniform wall thickness, which is from the outside of the live sole, where it's glossy, to the outside of the wall. Do this on the solar surface. Now I'll use the loop knife and clean up the collateral sulcus. Clean up the central sulcus. And when using a knife, keep this hand behind the knife at all times. Show me that again. When you're using a hoof knife, I have it in my hand there, Keep this hand behind. So I'm using that to help guide the blade. But in keeping it behind, if the horse is to flinch or move, then I'm not so likely to cut myself. Always keep it behind. Don't be holding the hoof and pulling up towards yourself. Care cart draft shoes, strong and reliable. Anytime your horses are working in rough terrain, the Care Cart Draft Series is your most likely choice of horseshoes. With the strength to hold up and protect the hoof, the most demanding of environments won't overwork these shoes. To view the full line of Care Cart horseshoes and to find a Farrier Products dealer near you, visit www.farrierproducts.com. I'm going to take the hind foot and pull it forward and put it on the stand and then rasp down to the uniform wall thickness that I showed you from the, the solar surface at the bottom of the foot. When I'm picking up that hind hoof to put it on a stand, I want to make sure that my back end is facing towards his front end. So I'm going to reach back, pull the leg towards me, set it on the stand, and then turn around. First, make sure he's square, everybody's comfortable. We're going to reach back, grab his leg, 
pull it forward, set it on the stand. Once I have it on the stand, then I'll turn around and using my rasp, I'm going to rasp down to that parameter that I set on the solar surface, which is a uniform wall thickness. And then round the edge, an area for the clip. And then come around on the outside. We know that cells require uniform stresses. Too much stress and they're destroyed. Too little stress and they atrophy because they're not getting enough circulation. The hoof wall grows from the coronary corium at the top, but also cells are put out on the inside of the laminae as it grows down. What we're trying to do by balancing this hoof in this way is get as uniform stresses up through those cells as we can. Now, when I set that down, I'm going to put it there and let it go. I'm going to reevaluate the hoof on a flat surface, look at the symmetry of it, and on a, on a white hoof, any bruising or hemorrhaging shows up. On a black hoof, they have it, but you don't see it. You can see you had some bruising on the outside here. That happened when the hoof wall was growing from the hairline, which is... Uh, uh, pretty common on a horse that's as base narrow as he is, meaning he's landing hard, wearing hard on the outside because of his conformation. You'll also see that he travels very close, not so close on this one as he does with this one. So this hoof is just brushing here. You see how it's trimmed the hair on the inside. This isn't so trimmed. So this leg travels a little closer to that one. So it's important to set this shoe fully on the outside make sure that the inside is very rounded up to, so that he's not going to damage or injure himself with uh, one foot against the other. When it was up closer to the coronary band? This, this bruising happened right at the hairline, the coronary corum, as the hoof wall was growing. So when that hoof wall was laid down right up here, there was a lot of trauma from below. And that could have been just a day I took him out and drove him on a hard road before he had shoes on. That would have been six months, a year ago? That's a good point. You're talking about how long ago it was. It takes nine months to a year to grow out from the hairline down, so that, that uh, certainly could have been a little over six months ago, which would have been consistent with just before I put shoes on them. So at this point, I would like to get some shoes on these hooves before going to the other side. Carecart Draft Shoes, strong and reliable. Anytime your horses are working in rough terrain, the Carecart Draft Series is your most likely choice of horseshoes. With the strength to hold up and protect the hoof, the most demanding of environments won't overwork these shoes. To view the full line of Carecart Horseshoes and to find a Farrier Products dealer near you, visit www.farrierproducts.com. When you're working on a horse, it's hooves, and even cleaning them or picking them out on a daily basis, get an apron. Get an apron that fits you. An apron protects your legs from the hoof. The edges could be sharp. There might be some clinches sticking out. It'll protect your legs, but it also gives you friction so you can hold on to that hoof a little better. Get one that pulls away. This one has Velcro, so if the horse gets caught on me, something like that happens, it pulls away in every direction. It also has a secondary snap up here so that I can snap it off, but it is Velcro. That'll pull right away if I'm caught on the horse, and that's a, a very safe and effective tool to have when you're working on the horse's feet. So he, he gets bored with this whole process too. 
And every time he's moving around, he's adjusting his feet, he's getting in a position where he may not be stable. So before you just reach down and grab a foot and pick it up, make sure that his other feet are planted so that he's in a stable situation so that he can take the weight off of the one foot that you want. That he's in a position where he can stand for a couple of minutes and allow you to do the job that you want to do. And all of this is so much to remember. It's so hard to remember, especially when you first start out. Because you're under there, you're sweating. I'm sweating, and I've been doing this for 40 years. You're sweating, your knees are wobbling, you're having a hard time remembering to breathe. The horse is irritating you sometimes. But, uh, you know, just do a little bit, set it down, move to another one, take a break. Because if you work too long, you're not going to be able to do it appropriately. In fact, uh, sometimes it's best to do a couple of feet today, maybe tomorrow, go do a couple of more feet. It's not only good for you, it's good for the horse. They don't like standing around all day. And again, a little exercise before this activity for the horse. You'll get plenty of exercise working on the horse. That'll help with uh, his ability to stand still. There's nothing like a, a the old days where a horse went 15 miles to get to the blacksmith shop and you know they stood still because they were tired and nowadays where the farrier shows up at the stable that isn't always the case they might have been standing in the stall for 24 hours until you come and they're, they're ready to go they're ready to do something and it may not be necessarily the same thing you want them to do so give them a little exercise even if it's in a round pen working them in a circle all right, and be conscious of the horse. Be conscious of where they are. Be conscious of their needs. He wasn't standing too calmly before because he had to take a leak. So we took him outside, and he did his business, and um, things go a little easier after that. So being aware of the, the horse's comfort and needs is important too. Using my hoof jack, I'll let him know I'm around. I'll palm that foot, let him give a little stretch, come behind the fetlock with my knee, and then uh, in that position, he's comfortable. Well, I'm comfortable. Pop those clinches off. And then I can use this end of the clinch cutter because the shoe has a crease in it and break those nails loose so that I can more easily pull that shoe off. Using my pull-offs, I'll pry between the heel of the shoe and the heel of the hoof. Just pull it back a little bit. Pull it back. Knock it down, grab as many nails as I can individually. And I'm always throwing these nails into my box because every one of those nails could be a potential disaster laying on the floor if the horse was to step down on them. It only takes a half inch roofing nail to enter the coffin joint or very sensitive tissues in the horse's foot. So let's try to prevent some of those injuries from happening by taking care to clean up our nails. I pulled all the nails individually. The shoe is loose. I will take the hoof pick, clean out the debris. I always pick towards, towards the front of the frog, towards the toe. That way if there is thrush or some other disease. If I go this way, it's easy to get too deep in and uh, create pain and damage to the horse's foot. I brush it to make sure there's no penetrations, no objects caught in there, and at this point we'll give them a break and go back to the front. Care cart draft shoes, strong and reliable. Anytime your horses are working in rough terrain, the Carecart Draft Series is your most likely choice of horseshoes. With the strength to hold up and protect the hoof, the most demanding of environments won't overwork these shoes. To view the full line of Carecart horseshoes and to find a Farrier Products dealer near you, visit www.farrierproducts.com. On the hind shoe, 
I look at that and, uh, and I looked at the nail heads. There's not quite as much wear on this side as there was on the left hind, which is quite typical. So I increased the, the crease there last time, but I'm not sure I have to because I don't have the wear that, that uh, I had before. A crease is used for several reasons. One is it's a place for your nail heads to sit in so that if I want to get the nails out individually, I can use a tool like a crease nail puller and pull those out individually. Another thing a crease does is allows for some form of traction because that fills up with sand, debris, and that uh, allows for friction against the environment. By increasing the length of the crease, that spread the metal apart, so it gave me more width. You can see it's wider on this side, narrower on this side. I've done that by grinding on this side, increasing the width of web on that side. You shoot a wear. Your shoe will be pushed to the side that's wearing the most because he's base narrow. He wears hard on the outside. I want a little more material there to support that side. Base narrow means that uh, if you look at the horse front and hind and watch how he travels, but his feet come in close together. And we bred these horses for centuries to be close at the bottom so they can walk in that 12 or 14 inch furrow without stepping on the potatoes on the side. They're also towed in somewhat on the front. Well, that horse is going to paddle or go out. And so in that movement of going forward, he's not going to squash the, the plants that he's cultivating around, but he's going to go over them and step into the furrow again. Also, when they, uh, they um, have all their muscle back here, their hocks are closer together, their feet go out a little bit behind because a horse has its greatest propulsion early on in the propulsion phase. And as long as the hocks are underneath the body or within this width, he has a great deal of strength and pulling power. Once those hocks twist enough so that they're outside, he's lost all integrity to the back end and no longer can pull. So the closer they are right from the start, the longer they stay under the body, the greater the ability he has to pull or to jump or to propel himself forward. Square him up, let him know I'm here. Palm that hoof, take it back in the natural range of motion, which on a lot of these horses is behind the other limb. The soil is dried up, hasn't been too much rain lately. Uh, it's, it's hard and the hooves become very hard too. I reach that parameter and it took me a while a little bit of digging, so I know I have some sole there that I can remove. It's okay to leave some. It's okay to leave some because that's a horse's only protection against the environment. I'll clean the collateral sulcus. The central sulcus. So the frog is soft like a dog's pad. As a farrier, we deal with insensitive tissues, but every insensitive tissue has a sensitive tissue behind it. Even if you have a well standing horse like Pat is here, I think he's really good for his third set of shoes and uh, it's tremendous physical work and you have to be conditioned for the work you expect yourself to do. This is demanding on you physically. It's demanding on the tools that you use. You're, you'll go through more tools than you would on saddle horses and like my nippers have long reins bigger jaws made for the heavy horse.
Alrighty, we'll go to the hind foot. I'm gonna get his attention, pull it forward, set it on there, spin myself around, and get my knee behind the, the heel of that hoof. Around the edges. And set it down. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.